Hello everybody, recording the weekly update video for the Crane Mountain Gaming Project. Um, not going to do some gameplay stuff this week because a significant amount of work has gone into completely back-end content, um, which I'll talk about a bit. But um, starting to get ready for the beta process, so I need to work out the, the basically like the final equipment and the scaling and so on. So at this point in the game, if you've seen the videos previously, the explorers are mostly running around with test equipment with bad names and, and very, very basic stats. So, um, so I spent a bunch of time this week basically doing the mathematical models for the scaling of hit points and damage and resistance and so on, which look like a bunch of complicated spreadsheets um, for levels 1 to 40. And the, the beta test or, or the initial test of the game is going to include content from levels 1 to 10, which is the fastest portion of the game, but it's a, you know, a quarter of the overall level. So. Um, Spent a bunch of time doing that, um, which means redesigning the items, redesigning the monsters and their attacks to some degree, not changing the types of monsters, um, but changing their hit points, redoing all their resistances and so on. So, <clears throat> so I've worked out those models and now I'm just going through and just creating a bunch of items and a bunch of armor and a bunch of monsters and so on. Um, not the most interesting thing and uh, not something I could really show you because as I said, it mostly looks like spreadsheets, but very critical to the success of the game. Um, I did a bit of research on how to do this because it was my first time doing modeling and scaling of the game. And there's not a lot of terribly good content out there on it actually. So I was um, posting some questions on Twitter and it sounds like there's some interest. So I will probably write a, uh, a blog entry on the Crane Mountain Gaming website um, about the general approach I took to scaling and how you could figure out scaling for your own RPG type game. Um, so if you're interested in the behind the scenes and the mechanics and so on, definitely check out that blog post that's on the new website www.cranemountaingaming.com, which I encourage you to check out. Um, I blog a little bit there, but uh, most of the content is around the, the, uh, the business and the game. Um, the game section is largely coming soon, but you can see some details on my past projects and I'll announce when I put up some teaser content, which hopefully will happen next week, actually. Um, in addition to that, if you're interested in supporting me via the Crane Mountain Gaming hoodie, those are available on the website as well. Um, as long as you're in the U.S., you can purchase those and uh, um, check out and pay online and so on, and I'll, I'll ship it over to you. Um, other things that happened this week, um, getting ready for the tax season. So now I have to file individual and business taxes. Um, so I spent a couple um, kind of half day periods working with the accountant that I've hired to, uh, to sort that out. It's a kind of a different ball game. It's a little bit simplified right now because I don't have any revenue, which is you know good and bad, I guess. Good for taxes, uh, bad, for, uh, bad for not having revenue, but that's all according to the plan. Um, and I'm also a pass-through entity, meaning the company is just me. Um, and so all the gains and losses are basically recognized as, as um, uh, my revenue. There's no split or share or anything like that. And I don't have any outstanding loans or debts or anything to deal with. Um, so yeah, taxes and content. So basically it's the week of the spreadsheet. Um, I did want to mention a few kind of design changes and modifications that I made to the game as well, which are sort of non-visual, but um, uh, I think are worth calling out if you're kind of a game design buff. So one thing I decided working through this content is that I didn't have enough levers for the power of items. Um, I couldn't differentiate the items enough. So the weapons, you know, is basically just how much damage they do and what type of damage do they do. Um, and this also meant that the value of certain stats were more limited, especially cunning. So <clears throat> one modification that I made was I did introduce a critical hit mechanic. Um, and the way this works is there's basically items, um, your base stats and items can contribute to both a percent chance of a critical hit um, and then also damage scaling. So a critical hit um, when it occurs is, is a, um, a base damage hit, just a random damage hit, plus the critical damage scaling, which is a flat incremental damage scaling. So anytime you make a critical hit, it's guaranteed based on your gear and your stats to be a set amount higher than the random roll for the base attack damage. Um, the advantage of this is now I can differentiate items further because you can have an item with lower base damage, high critical hit. You could have a very uh, strong weapon that has a high critical hit ch chance, good base damage, and a bunch of added crit damage. Um, or you could reduce the power on the item up front to increase the crit chance and damage. There are a lot of different levers there. 
So um, we're going to have classes of weapons, for example, that don't crit very often, but when they do get a critical hit, they'll do pretty high damage. There'll be others that do a little bit lower critical damage, but they will crit more consistently. Um, so basically, it gives me more power curves to work with to create different types of items. Um, so that was kind of a big change that happened. And the other thing, and this is part of the content rebalance, but isn't purely numerical, um, the, the way the monsters were working in previous versions of the games you saw is there's a chance that they drop loot, and they always drop basically the same loot. Um, so the, the only control over rarity was really how often do the monsters occur. So um, I made a change now to basically put in a, a simple loot table. So they're basically anywhere from zero to four drops available um, from monsters in a common, uncommon, rare, and kind of ultra rare tier. Um, and so they can drop different things now. Some of them, you know, the common and uncommon drop are the same or they have no common drop, etc. cetera. Um, but that introduced uh, a lot of flexibility around the uh, drop rates of additional materials. And I added a whole bunch of components to the game to be the basis for crafting the initial items. Um, this is critical as well because uh, the first 10 levels of content, you need to be able to acquire either by the shop, find them while adventuring, or by crafting the gear that you need to scale through those first 10 levels. Um, so now, once I get through the, uh, the rest of the <clears throat> monster rebalancing, I'm basically going to have um, a couple starter items with build chains and then new starting points for items you can find or buy but not craft a couple levels into the game with their own build paths. And all of those are going to be composed out of this list of about 30 to 40 materials, um, which, you know, include like organic materials, uh, metals, um, you know, pre-made components and other things that you get from fighting different types of enemies or they may show up in the shop and all of that may be influenced by your perk choices. So all of these decisions kind of amount to um, a, a lot more um, design space for me in which to create the items and the monsters and so on. So that was a kind of a big change. And then the other thing I did, um, and this is kind of minor, but uh, I think it's important from a game design perspective to focus on. Sometimes we make a decision to do something stylistically or because we believe in a game advantage. And then we look at it um, sort of through practice or through testing or through simulated iterations. Um, and it turns out to be a problem. So I made a decision a while back, and if you've been watching these videos, you probably saw it, um, to remove the feature where the explorer could just open a portal and go through. They had to actually use a portal cube. So anytime you wanted to go through the portal, you had to use a portal cube. Um, the advantage of this is I could design the game such that the characteristics of the portal cube always control the adventure level, and there's a lot of interest and variation. The downside to this is that you basically have to buy, find, or craft them every single time you want to go on an adventure. So it increases busy work, but it also creates dead ends in the game. So you're playing the game, you've you know gone through three or four portal cubes and they didn't drop, the shop hasn't stocked anything um, that you can use to create one and you, you didn't, um, you know, you don't have the crafting materials for them otherwise. So you get in this position where you actually can't progress in the game and that's a total no-no can have a dead end in the game. Um, so what I've done is I uh, basically created a hybrid where the adventurer can go through the portals, basically open the portal and go through. Post-testing, there'll probably be an energy cost to do that um, so that there's some limiting mechanic, but not one that creates dead ends. Uh, but for now, you can just open a portal and go through. And that creates an, a, a basically a generic adventure that's keyed off of the level of the explorer. So it has a set frequency and number of encounters um, it, you know, may be indoors or outdoors, depending on how much content I get in the prototype. Um, but it's going to have a, basically a random seated assortment of monsters and no real special characteristics about it. And then optionally, you can craft, purchase, or find portal cubes, and you can use those to open a portal that is keyed off of the characteristics of the, of the portal cube. So basically, from a game perspective, this means you'll have periodic but not permanent and guaranteed um, ability to, to go on modified or special types of explorations, which may have certain types of monsters you're trying to hunt down for parts or, you know, a, a greater chance of finding, um, you know, rare loot or other things like that. But if at any point you don't have those, you can just proceed through an adventure and still accumulate resources and gain levels and so on. Um, so this is good because in addition to removing the, uh, the dead end, it makes the portal cubes more of 
a kind of a special event. Um, so depending on what it does for the entertainment value of the game and the pacing of the game, I can manipulate some levers to increase or decrease the supply of portal cubes along the way without running the risk of creating a scenario where players are just stuck and can't proceed through the game. So um, anyway, yeah, there's, there's some insight into kind of designs and activities this week. So a whole lot of design and content work, a little bit of coding, but mostly manipulating data structures and database entries and spreadsheets and so on, working on the, the taxes, et cetera. Um, generally, in terms of pacing, things are going pretty well right now. I had a little bit of a scare on the timeline for the art, but I think it's going to be okay. Um, so hopefully in the next few weeks, you'll start to see some of the art for the prototype being teased and then worked into the client as I get um, delivery. I'm also pretty close to signing an agreement with the, uh, with the um, musician to do the music for the game, which I'll talk a bit more about. And uh, you probably know who it is if you follow the, the Twitter account or me generally. Um, so hopefully that'll be coming soon and maybe put um, preview in a couple weeks um, while the beta is ongoing. I'll put some, some preview music or other stuff on the website, um, samples or clips or something like that, not full music. Um, and we're up to four beta signups right now. So uh, my minimum target is five. So I get one more person I'm happy with the beta, although the more the merrier. Um, so things I'll be doing the next three week, few weeks is basically finishing the content work, which is kind of the goal for this week and maybe Monday slash Tuesday, because that's just, it's very slow um, uh, doing, doing the content work versus the coding for me at least. Um, so we want to finish that up. And then as the art and music becomes available, I'll be making modifications to the, the design and the scenes and the characters in the game, which is not really changing mechanics, but just incorporating that art and adjusting layouts and screen sizes and position and movement logic and so on to accommodate the layout of the scenes and the size of the objects and so on. Um, so we'll be incorporating those and then, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, um, after we've kind of incorporated all of that, um, then I'll be doing preparation work for the beta, which is a bunch of internal testing, both manual testing, meaning me while I work playing through the game in uh, a large number of iterations and making tweaks, and then also simulations. Um, so the idea behind the simulations is since I have all the numbers and logic in the game, I'm gonna write custom code that is basically a very limited auto-generated version of instant exploration. So I'm gonna create, say, I don't know, 50 characters with three explorers each, so 150, and I'm gonna send them on X number of adventures and basically see how many of them die and how many of them survive in kind of a simulated environment. Um, so I can look at those numbers and adjust balance. And this is kind of tricky to do because, you know, the, the simulation could be really complicated and, you know, they could add gear, et cetera. But basically I don't wanna recreate the entire logic of the game in script form. Um, and because one, it probably wouldn't work, and two, it'd be horrendously complicated. Um, but basically, if I um, start the simulation from the standpoint of here's the explorer level and here's average gear for the level, and then not factoring in you know, whether they level up or get new stuff or whatever, but just at that snapshot in time, run them through you know, a very large number of simulated iterations of content and check their like, mortality rate and, uh, and that sort of thing. Um, because I want to tune the game around a sort of uh, a, a, a specific survival rate, which makes certain items and game mechanics relevant. So we're going to be doing some simulation design and running a bunch of simulations as well. Um, and if you guys are interested in how that works, um, I may blog about that some as a follow up to the uh, to the scaling blog post. Um, but I could also record a video, um, you know, end of week video and basically do a demo of the simulation and show you how those numbers work if you're curious as a design about that. So there you go, there you have it. So um, yeah, do some more tax work over the weekend, focus on the content stuff, and then we're, uh, we're into next week. So uh, a lot of things moving and shaking and the timing still looks pretty good for, uh, for doing the beta test in um, mid to late March. And then we're still targeting a hopefully early, but basically a summer launch for the game. Um, and that'll involve kind of a, a period of time leading up to the launch where I'm working with um, PR, which I intend to hire outside, um, do get some PR consulting to build buzz for that, potentially for Kickstarter as well. And then in parallel doing kind of production hardening and scaling and, and load testing and so on to make sure at launch that the game can, uh, can perform and can sustain a large number of players 
Um, we don't want to overdo that because you don't want to solve a problem you don't have yet, but I want to be prepared to do those optimizations. So, you know, if we have a success or reasonable success, I can scale it. Um, it won't fall down on people and so on. Um, cause most of it right now is on a development server, just sitting on my computer and, um, it handles me as a single player perfectly flawlessly, but there's no guarantee that that'll, that'll work at scale. So, um, you know, we'll do some simulation of uh, load test and stuff too, where instead of just simulating the explorers fighting and leveling up and so on, it'll actually go through the network interface to the game and run iterations that way and not really check to see, you know, who lives and who dies, but basically does the performance choke. That's kind of the general idea. So there you go, a uh, little bit of uh, behind the scenes as to what's going on in game design and development and, uh, and the business side of things. So uh, thanks, thanks for watching. If you have any questions about, uh, about the, uh, the company, the project, or what I'm doing, um, or any of the topics that I talk about from a game design perspective, um, let me know and I'll be happy to uh, get into more information or if it's in a prior video or blog post or whatever, I'll point it to you and then you can shoot me more precise questions. All right, love you guys. Peace.